right, Joe, things have gotten a little crazy. You ate too much ice cream. You owe Oliver ten bucks. Time to plan. Time to get rational about this. Guys, just admit it, you have some problems. Big problems, small problems, problems that are not really small but aren't big enough for your friends to listen to you complain about for more than five minutes. Problems the police might be interested in, problems a doctor might not be able to explain. These problems might require you to look into some interesting solutions. One possibility being to fake your own death. Some classic reasons for doing this would be to escape debt, escape the law, maybe even run off to start a new life. Perhaps with a new wife? You see, this is what British politician John Stonehouse did in 1974 Miami when he faked his own death by leaving a pile of his clothes beside the water. That's it! He left some clothes in a pile by the beach so people would assume he was dead. And then, they did. But you know what, to be fair, my roommate and I do regularly terrify each other on laundry day when we come back from the dead. So anyways, he masterfully faked his own death and then fled to Australia with his secretary, thus showing a further lack of imagination. Now, sadly for John Stonehouse, his new life lasted barely a month before his attempts to transfer money from the old life to the new life drew the suspicions and attentions of police investigators. It probably didn't help that investigators noticed this new Australian citizen was constantly reading British newspaper articles that were attacking the recently deceased John Stonehouse. Now, you could take the lazy approach like Mr. Stonehouse, or you can utilize all the inventiveness and impracticality of a 10-year-old boy running away from home, like Marcus Schrenker did in early 2009. Schrenker was a less-than-honest investment advisor who, during the final days of 08 and the first few days of 09, had his investment advisor's license expire, was suffering under multiple lawsuits that cost him over half a million dollars so far, and then his wife filed for divorce. So, he reacted like any sane man would. He decided to fake his own death. Two days after the divorce was filed, Marcus faked his death, not by leaving his swim shorts in a pile, but by piloting a small plane, and after making a distress call to air traffic controllers, telling them he was going to crash, parachuted out before letting it fly on autopilot to crash 200 miles ahead. He then found his way to a phone and got the police to take him, under an alias, to a hotel. By the time the police made a connection between the crash and Marcus, he'd already fled to a private campsite in a motorcycle carrying saddlebags filled with cash. In case you were wondering, MSNBC confirmed that he used some of that cash to purchase a six-pack of Bud Light Lime. Surprisingly, the six-pack did nothing to stop him from being caught by the police only three days after his adventure began. Now, I honestly feel kind of sorry for the guy, but his experience highlights another reason you might want to fake your own death. The story. Even the most mundane faked death accounts are really a lot better to hear than what happened at the office today. With the obvious exception of the anecdotes told by those of you fortunate enough to work at the Wacky Antics Factory. Of course, you can always be like Timothy Dexter and fake your own death for something completely ridiculous, like spite. Timothy Dexter is a man who practically deserves an entire episode all of his own, but for now I'll just let you know that he was an illiterate 18th century American businessman who made money primarily by being really lucky. When Timothy reached his late 50s, he began to wonder how people might react to his death. So of course, he had a servant go out and announce to the public that he died. Over 3,000 people showed up to his funeral, and he sat in hiding, watching them all. <laughs> well, Timothy decided that his wife's reaction was not sad enough. So when he came back from the dead, he had her punished. Should you fake your own death? I'd say it's probably better to avoid the kind of life decisions that would lead you to having to try and fake your own death, even if all you want to do is see if your wife will be sufficiently sad at your funeral. Oh, unless you're a fictional character in an adventure novel, in which case it's a great way to throw off the villain before you come back to thwart his evil schemes. Although I'd be curious how you're watching the show given that you don't exist. Huh. I wonder if Oliver would be sufficiently sad at my funeral. Why, if he wasn't, then I'd know what the punishment would be. I'd fake his murder. Problems, small problems. Problems aren't really big or small, but <laughs> sadly for John Stonehouse, his new life only really lasted about a month until he aroused it. <laughs> I just powered down.